Hello. I am following up on the uh, alleged harassment against one of the security guards that happened on okay. Monday. Yeah. Who should so speak both with? of our bosses are actually over at the Straight other desk. Over? They're the people yeah. you're gonna want to talk. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hi there. Hi, how's it going? What's up? Well, I'm following up on the. I got a call from the assistant city attorney's office today to follow up on harassment against a security guard here. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're aware of it? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> it was Regan Benson. Mm -hmm. Um, follow, like, was the guard for doing what he was supposed to do. Sorry, I can't hear you with that. And then he, Mike, was trying to tell her, you know, that's just what I've been told to do, which our bathroom process. And he said, you should talk to the library staff. She refused to do that. Okay. And he just kept kind of berating him and telling him it's his job, it's his responsibility, all this stuff. And then he called for help. Other guards came. And they told him to go, like, why don't you take a break? And he went to leave, and she followed him. Um, she followed him all the way up to the second floor where he was going to go to a different post on the second floor and yep. be there. Then he went and talked to the guard on the courts. And that guy, James, was trying to just tell him to calm down and just keep your cool. Then he went outside to smoke a cigarette. She followed him. And the whole time he's going up the stairs, too, he's like, would you please stop following me? Like, I don't mm -hmm. feel safe with you following me. Okay. Like, he said that to it's on the camera. Okay. It's the recording is posted on the internet, okay. on her site, as well as another site, and we've been getting phone calls. So the second site is like, a, like an anti, it's like an anti First Amendment auditor YouTube. Oh gosh. Where they're like, we're posting these people who think that they're doing something in the name of like, justice and freedom, yep. but they're just harassing people. So it's from that video. People have been calling the library to say what is being done for that man. He was being harassed. Why didn't the library help him? And I'm like, the library wasn't involved because like the library okay. staff didn't get involved because nobody alerted them. And so, anyway, so yeah, he goes up there. He's going up the stairs, and it's when he's going up the stairs that he's like, "Would you please stop following me? I don't feel safe." Yep. And she followed him all around, and then he was really trying to keep his cool, and he's like, I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why you want to be this person. I am going to try to keep my cool with you. I'm not angry at you. I just don't think you need to be following me around and making this about me or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, long thing. Um, and honestly, I mean, she's a menace. She's mm -hmm. a menace, and everybody knows that. Yeah. But at some point, she has to have consequences for her actions. You followed a man around right? because you thought he did something wrong but all he was doing was what he was told to do for his job. Yep. If she had a problem with the process, it's not his decision. Right. She should have brought it to the library staff. The next day, was it Tuesday that I talked to her outside or was it Wednesday? It was yesterday so it was Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday she's outside sure stopping Wednesday. people and she doesn't really know me so I walked up to her and was like Hey, what's going on? She gives me some literature, tells me that there's a problem with the bathrooms in the library. I'm like, oh, what are the problems? And I was like, well, you know, actually the process is to, you know, keep everybody safe. And then she realized that I was an employee. And so she got super argumentative with me. And, I mean, I willingly went into that conference sure. conversation with her. But mm -hmm. I'm, like, trying to have a civil conversation to say... Hey, we have a process for a reason. You did hear about all, you know, the drug use that closed the library mm -hmm. last last year. Mm -hmm. She was kind of kind of implies that she doesn't really believe that that was the real reason or whatever. Um, and I, you know, was just like, well, you know, th if you have a problem with the way the process is, you need to bring it to the library staff. She's like, no, I don't. No, I don't have to do that. That's not my responsibility. I'm like, well, the only way I can address issues is if somebody brings them to our attention. And so, like, that was a side thing where she doesn't want to have a civil conversation. She doesn't want to be part of a solution. She just wants to complain. And... It, she was there yesterday as a result of what happened on Monday because she's trying to like rile people up where about uh, she oh. was you know where the little kind of enclosure out here the south um, entry she by the garage where there's like an enclosure where the um, like uh, literature can go oh, she was sure. standing right there and 
So I threw away the thing she handed me right in front of her, which she wasn't pleased about, but I told her it was my freedom to do so. Mm -hmm. um, what literature was she handing She was handing out pocket constitutions and some kind of like document that said something about like your your rights are being infringed upon or whatever by the library because you're being asked for your name to go into the bathroom or something. And she was also approaching people in here and doing that too. Yeah, yeah. And she was kind of impeding some people from getting into the library and stopping them and they didn't really want to talk to her but most people just kind of walked away from her if they didn't want to talk to her. Um, but it, I mean, the real issue is how she just like tracked that guy down yeah. when he left the library. Right. Finally, after he smoked his cigarette, he came in back inside and went into the employee only area on the second floor. And I just feel like she's. Has there been any consideration? Because I seem to remember people being ejected for less. Yes, has that I mean been I a know. Discussion? No, so I tried to eject her a long time ago, and the police did come. Like we called because yep. she wasn't wearing a mask. It was before we had all this sure. kind of in place. But um, the police did come, and they were like, "So what do you want us to do?" And it was well, it was yeah. actually really. And then they finally were like, "You know, she's the First Amendment auditor." But the thing that bothers me about her is like she is violating our standards of behavior. So but she, that, exactly. So that's why I'm wondering why she hasn't been issued a notice of ejection already. And this I is. So, I think that none of us feel empowered to because yeah. we always get told. Well, and that's, she's a First Amendment auditor. Don't touch it. Don't talk to her. Oh no. That's why I called Sergio yeah. to be like, "Can I?" Yes. Can I do this? I'm like, I'm asking you as the attorney for the city, please advise me as a city and what did he employee. Say? And he's like, well, that's up to you. And he okay. was a little evasive so about it. So just know that I talked to him today as well. Okay. And the answer is yes. Okay. In fact, and the follow-up is not sure why she hasn't already been. I know. Yeah. Because so. she did take the bathroom key for a while, and we were all watching her on her live, and she's flaunting the fact that she's holding on to the bathroom key sitting in her study room. And I'm like, you've technically broken the rule there because you're stealing property. You're holding and like, on. if she keeps the bathroom badge, she's now, she's confiscated library property. She's now making it harder for us to provide access to that bathroom badge to somebody else. I didn't actually know she did that. Yeah. And that was on Monday? That was on Wednesday. It's on our oh. live stream from yesterday. Okay, so that was yeah. part of the Monday, Wednesday thing. So she's just a pain in the ass. And like she's making I don't a big think deal. She's edited the live stream yet. For okay. Wednesdays? For I, okay. I haven't seen it. But she. I don't know. And like her, so the second um, YouTube channel that is like saying she's the That's one. what I was going to ask you. Yeah, What's it's called. Fraud. Frauditor. So it's like auditor with a. With an F. F in front of it. F-R. Auditor. Yeah, and it's this video right here. I mean, can you send me that link? I should just can. copy it right now. Yeah. Perfect. So she actually tell me your name again. Jean uh, Mulder. I Mulder. Mulder. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I was thinking Penner for mm. some reason was your last name. Yeah. I knew it was something from TV. <laughs> <laughs> so she actually created the video of her harassing the guard as a. I'm going to see this video and then stay tuned because I'm about to do a live stream. So she came in here and got a room, and I always just check her YouTube account because I'm like, I want to know what she's planning. Mm -hmm. And so then she, like, did this, like, premiere of it, and then she's like, and then she went live a few minutes later. I was like, so, after you watch that little jam, you know, kind of thing, and then kind of started her whole, I'm doing a protest and redress of government because of the whole thing. And that was yesterday? That was yesterday. And I think okay. she was on for an hour and 30 minutes, right, up until she walked into the court because one of her friends from the homeless community that she helps was having a hearing yesterday. So. Oh, wait, that's when she left from that's outside. She, yeah. left. She, pulled, she pulled out from down here and drove up to the second floor and went in through the second floor entrance and filmed all the way into the court until she like went actually in mm -hmm. pretty much so okay yeah and several like, a couple months ago she tried to 
approached the guard on duty about the bathroom yeah. issue, and she refused. Like our process is, we just ask somebody for their first name, like mm-hmm. a first name. It doesn't have to be the real one. Just then we try to say, we're just like, what's you know, can we have a name or what's your name? She wouldn't give it. And so the guard was kind of like, oh, I, I need to have that. And I just, I happened to be walking up, and I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll let you into the restroom. And she's like, well, what's this whole, pro- this whole thing? I'm like, our process is just to ask people for a first name, <coughs> sign out a badge to them so they can access the restroom, and then we have to bring it back. That's it. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, why do you do that? I just, I'm like, and she's recording me, explaining to her. And we do it to try to maintain safety, um, given some issues that we've dealt with in the past, blah, blah, blah. She posted that video. You can't really hear what I'm saying because it's kind of quiet and it's a very short video. Okay. So nobody really, it's kind of funny she posted it because she didn't get a rise out of anybody. She didn't get a reaction. But she's just trying to complain that we're, like, violating people's rights by asking them to provide a name to sign out of that. Okay. And I'm like, sure, it's inconvenient, but this is the process that we've kind of felt forced into because of the dramatic issues we've faced. Yep. Yep. So. Because wasn't the remediation ultimately over a couple hundred thousand dollars? I don't even know what the end of the amount was. Yeah. they had to redo the bathrooms in here. They redo the lobbies. The bathrooms upstairs had to be, you know, cleaned out. The whole HVAC system yep. had to be sanitized. Um, so I'm sure it was pricey, plus just the consultant fee for doing the testing. Right. And the recommendations for remediation. Um, okay. But yeah, it was. Just, it, it did help the library ultimately get procedure changes. That's why that door over there is not open during right. business hours because having just a single entry point yep. helps us manage people who are coming in and there's a problem or whatever. So. Is the code of conduct? Uh, Published? Is that something I can look up? Or? It's on the city's website. You just have to look um, mm. for that search feature, the little magnifying glass, and type in standards of behavior. Standard, that's what I was trying to remember. Standards mm-hmm. of behavior. Um, and presumably I can go look because I have them with me, but the ejection forms mirror the yeah, standards of behavior. The same as like yep. Okay. Yeah. This um, is when I did the they do, because the tier one and tier so, like, two are unreasonably interfering with the use of city facilities by others, interfering <coughs> with city staff's performance of their duties. I know that it's kind of tricky because they're always in the city. private contracted. Yep. Um, <coughs> and behaviors directed at another, knowing or with reasonable grounds to know it will tend to promote or provoke a fire. But there's also one I mean, that says threats, intimidation, harassment. Yes. Threats, so, I mean, we have multiple accounts of that. actually all tier two violations, which could come up to a 90, you know, three month yes. um, exclusion. And it, um, Sergio pointed out that the majority of the video took place outside of the library, and certainly I do feel like, well, because it started in the library, and then after the first couple of minutes, he left, because his supervisor, site supervisor, was like, why don't you go take a break? So he goes out to the south lobby, starts walking on the stairs, but that's where she really pursues him. Yep. And that's where I feel like, you cross the line pursuing Well, and I feel... Because, like, if you really had a, di- a problem with the process, then you would have focused on the new guards that were there. Yep. In, in, and, and, or in come talk to the you. process. Mm-hmm. Or talk to library staff. But you chose right. to focus on this one man and mm-hmm. follow him. And that's, I, you know, she just really is pushing it too hard. She's pushing so hard in, in belief that maybe she's protected by the First Amendment. But I'm like, this isn't even a First Amendment issue. Uh, okay. So I'm I'm obviously the one that's been tasked at looking at the criminal piece of this, but it necessarily involves the civil piece. Um, so, and like I said, I already talked to Sergio as well, and it's very apparent that she's crossed the line, and when it comes to a notice of ejection, we're way into it. Okay. Multiple counts, so multiple violations. Yeah. So... 
just think that she... And I was trying... That's what I was trying to ascertain by talking to him is, can I, yes. even though this happened in the Civic Center proper, because it was up on the second floor majority and also outside, mm-hmm. can, I, can I decide to do this? I, I know she's a sensitive topic, so that's why mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm also trying to just make sure I have the support of the city to pursue this against <coughs> And like... Based on my conversation with him, yes. Okay. That's not a not in question. Okay. And then I'm going to review the videos and um, yeah. uh, Damien, I think, is still on his way to talk to me at the PD. Um, what would be extremely helpful sure. is a statement directly from you guys. Okay. You could just email me. Um, and whatever you think is relevant when it comes to uh, summation of history, pattern of behavior, uh, and because it sounds like it's escalated. Which That's is true, because when it comes to that first Saturday she came in here, she just was kind of basic about it, and like I explained the process mm-hmm. to her, but what you come back a couple months later, and now you really want to like put the screws okay. to us on it? And that's stuff that I don't know, so okay. that would be very helpful, okay. relevant history. Um, um, she also mentions the library and something about it here. It's hard for me because I know that I'm getting her views, but at the same time, you know, it is I hard. have to watch. I watch her stuff regularly because I don't even really know when to expect something like this right. again. I think she's a frightening person. Yeah. And I worry she is about a little my, unhinged. And mm-hmm. I worry about my staff, and mm-hmm. I worry about, like, all of us. And, like, even if the rest of the library of the patrons weren't really affected by it, everyone was totally affected by it for the rest of the day yesterday and all day today. So that's that's extremely important to put in writing. Yeah. Okay. To articulate both your individual mm-hmm. um, perception, um, yeah. the feeling of, of maybe lack of support or mm-hmm. not sure how to handle it, mm-hmm. um, the fact that you feel like she's volatile, everything you just described, yeah. and then your concern about that obviously translates to the safety of um, okay. patrons here that are wanting to be peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, here is my card with the case number. Thank awesome. you. You can throw that in the subject line. Okay. And... As far as how to handle notice, um, what are you mo- most comfortable so with? So generally, I mean, for something like this, since she's not present for us to hand it mm-hmm. to her, her to sign, mm-hmm. um, there is a U.S. mail option because okay. I, I can fill it out and complete it and just mail it to her and she's served. By and the city supports that that counts as service. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's on. Um, it's on the, oh, that's the broken one. Yep, so it's like method of issuance. You can do verbal delivery or be with you can delivery or US mail. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we have a good address for her. I was just gonna ask that was my expression is what you have on file for her. So I guess now that I think about that, I don't know if I have her. an address for her nonprofit. Is that true? What's the name of her nonprofit? Helping Hands for Dignity. It is a registered 501c something going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, guess no. I got a little upset. So then the other thing that we would do, <laughs> the other thing we would do is we would write it up. The date of incident would have been Monday. Well, it sounds like it's Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. And then whatever issue Wednesday is, is like whenever she might come back to the library, yep. then we would notify her, sorry, you've been excluded for the, from, yes. the, from the Civic Center and Library yep. due to your behavior on these dates. Yep. Um, we would inform the allied guards that we would prefer them to do the issuing. Okay. Um, or we would just immediately call police and ask, you know, an yep. officer for a standby to and respond yep. and provide the the notice. Because we've done that with other people before that were kind of yep. iffy on, on their, how their response will be. Because she would freak out. And I would, would not have a library person do it for right. sure. Because she would... And I would probably expect that she would call some of her friends and get a whole bunch of other mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I so. feel like we would just have to kind of quietly call police, request a mm-hmm. response, and then have her served and removed from the, from the building. Okay. Um, is probably how we should do it. Um, I have talked with my direct supervisors, um, and at the time I talked to them earlier, they were like, 
don't do anything on the exclusion until we know what are. They're going to be talking first thing tomorrow morning, and I can let them know in the morning, hey, this okay. is what, that I just spoke with you, that yep. you have been in communication with Sergio. Yep. This is kind of where we're at. Okay. Very good. And the whole time, too, when you watch the video, he was saying that if she didn't leave him alone, he was going to call the police, and mm -hmm. she kept being like, go ahead, do it, do it. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, he does stop to try to explain why he's not doing it, because he's like, I don't want it to come to that. But unfortunately, when a person is that, like, Hostile. And like, mm -hmm. just like the fact that she just pursued him the way she did, mm -hmm. like it was her right to pursue a person. Right. I'm like, you have your, your rights kind of confused, lady. You are not acting appropriately. Yep. I, I just don't think she can keep getting away with this. She's just been pushing it way too hard. No, it, agreed. It needs to be dealt with. And that was one of my questions to Sergio, is why has she been given so much latitude? Yeah. Yeah, because that's Because it, it needs to stop. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Poor Kenitha. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. She has really tore into her before mm -hmm. uh, on the videos. But, um... Yeah, and I just feel like you don't have a really good life to stand on what you're arguing is wrong. Because, like, we're not denying that you're anything. Right. We're just trying to manage the use of a public restaurant in a way that promotes safety for all things. Right. Right. So. And the slightest bit of accountability with the badge process. Yeah. Assists in that. I, and she kept, uh, she, she, uh, of course, like exaggerates everything. Like, people have to sign their name. No, they don't. We just ask you to provide a name. Mm -hmm. We write it down. It's more of a sign out mm -hmm. of the badge. And at the end of the day, it's really for their safety. Because yeah. if they do have an ID in there or something, they want to know their name. Like, we're going to want to be like, hey, Bob, you okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry, just like yeah, no problem. Oh my gosh, the video is not working in here. Literally can't get out. Okay. <laughs> um, I told uh, Rachel that next Thursday she has to park the van on the second level mm -hmm. after the well because of the stairs on Friday. Because that was one of the things I was going to make sure all vans all the city were there. Hey, Tush, it's Nalder. I'm in the library and I literally can't get out on the radio. So it's not like. So if I need to break <coughs> to assist wherever, let me know. I'm just interviewing stuff on my case. But I could couldn't <laughs> but it's not it's not working. I can't answer up in the in the library apparently. So Okay, so just let me know. Thanks. All right, bye. And I will be all up with the website. Uh, let's see. I know I have all your info. I do not have yours. Okay. First and last. I think you have a card. Oh, is my card here? Oh, perfect. Is that Rachel's? Oh, it's Rachel's. Mine's around. Look in the drawer. I can set it down. Yeah, you can just set it down. And the best phone for you. <laughs> 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 okay.
Okay. I'm in all of this. <laughs> yet, all. yet we still have to I ask know, every I time. Think it's funny. I'm, like, I'm in all the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and the minute we think we know you're in our system, we'll just go back and look you up. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, we can't Not pull fair. you up. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's really irritating. So, uh, okay. So I will stand by for statements from both of you, okay. from the fourth, from the sixth, okay. and then, like I said, whatever relevant history, like you had a history from months ago. Yeah, and I that seemed relevant. I don't know if I did an incident report for that. I probably should have. But if you I did, will, I'll be able to find some information about it because I did get in. I got an email from City Manager Sean Lewis acknowledging, you know, how I handled the situation via email. So he emailed me over that weekend okay. or on that Monday. Okay. Um, and I can always check back to her okay. YouTube page because she posted it. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Twenty twenty one. The lady that called me today from Cincinnati, you know, like, you can tell. Because she's making money off of the image without the permission. And I was like, that's interesting. I never heard about that. that interesting. She's like, look she it up. And I'm like, that makes sense. Her. She turned on her radio, accidentally was on, and she turned on her <coughs> And she was like, well, shit. Goes my demonetization. There goes my monetization. And I was like, Oh, did she really say that? She did that. Yeah, because if you play music without uh, permission, you're copyright infringing. Yeah. So we usually have Let It Go queued up because Disney loves to cease and desist people. So, yeah. Yeah. So. But it's silly that that's what we have to do. You know, instead of just being like, stop being a turd, not the movie. Does the city know about. Mm. Are they saying they can't, because you're a city employee, they can't bother with that? What? As far as your image online? I don't oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I never heard of this. Some random lady from Cincinnati mm -hmm. called because she saw the video and mm -hmm. wanted to complain and say that wasn't right. Why, why did that woman get to do that? Yeah. Um, yeah, in 2021, I said, I feel threatened by her. I'd like to press charges. And I was told, no, I could not pursue that. Um, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I can as a private citizen pursue whatever the heck I want. Mm -hmm. But one of the officers that responded does not work for the, um, for the city anymore. But he was like, she's not threatening you. And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't really think that you get to determine what's threatening to you. I yeah. feel unsafe. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> I was like, I know that there are laws and, and it might not hold up in court, but like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. It's still your, your experience. I was like, yeah, yep. I was like, I don't feel, because in I'm sorry you had that experience with the cop. I'm going to go over there and educate her. And I'm sorry, but that sounds like she's going to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I didn't know who she was at all. Oh, and really? And she comes over, and I refused to let her into a room because she wasn't wearing a mask. And I was like, it's a mandate. Like, I can't. Yeah. And I, can't, I can't even believe you guys were open. We were. Our, my old library was not open Yeah. for, like... Three, no, no, it, we didn't open to the public for three months. Oh. oh, no, actually, no, for a year, because we started doing curbside. We weren't open to the public, and we did curbside only. And then in January of 2022, they reopened two locations. This would be November or December of 2021. Okay. But I oh, asked it went through mid-2022, so, yeah, hmm. Paulus was pretty serious about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, I luckily did not, we didn't have thing. feedback yeah. from patrons <laughs> about having to wear masks inside the libraries oh, when we was, did open. Uh, we got fought tooth and nail about it. It's interesting. But we had a lot of officers that also were, like, anti-mask, and mm -hmm. so when we would call them about it, they were just like, whatever. So well, here's the, I mean, we, um, we swear to uphold the Constitution, and that, yeah. that's an easy one. That's yeah. an easy constitutional one. And if someone's going to um, go after it's not going to be you. It's going to be right. us right. Yeah. on that violation. Yeah. So That makes sense, yeah. yeah. But I was also just like, it doesn't matter that she's not wearing the mask. It's that she came in here and caused us to Exactly, like, yeah. I want the, the behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's okay. really the whole issue with her is not, like, the whole thing with <clears> that, <throat> it's not the First Amendment issues. Like, you're not... First Amendment auditing the library because the First Amendment doesn't cover the right to use a public restroom and we do not deny anybody right. access. Right. We've had like 15 of these badges stolen by mm -hmm. people, some of them probably mistakenly and some of them probably on purpose but they don't do any good because if you take them we deactivate them. Right. 
So, like, because, like, I'm not dumb enough to not keep track of the patch. Right. Um, you know, so it's like we're just trying to maintain safety in the face of some severe problems with inappropriate use of the restrooms, drug use in the restrooms, and, you know, just dangerous situations that are dangerous to the individuals and the general public. And that's all we're trying to do. Right. So she doesn't want to hear that, though. Yep. She just wants to complain about what we're doing and harass people in the process. And that's why I'm just like, you're missing the point here. Mm-hmm. And when I try to talk to her to try to explain what what we're trying to do and the, what the process is, and if there's a problem with it, you take it to the library staff, not the guards. Right. And she was like, nope, 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 nope. And I was like, well, then, then I can't help you. Okay. So, all right. Well, thank you for all that. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Okay. I'll go meet with. And yeah, we'll get stuff emailed to you. We have an okay, in-service perfect. day tomorrow, so we're closed to the public tomorrow. Okay. So I think we should be, have some time to get that done tomorrow. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate. All right. It. Oh, I'll talk to you soon.